They're cricket mad here, dozens of games in an enormous park in the centre of Kabul. Looks normal enough, but look closely. No women or girls, no families, just boys and men. A year ago, the scene would have been completely different. And that's how the Taliban believes it should be. Women covered in public, attending to their husband's needs and looking after the kids. The uncovered faces of female models are painted out on buildings. The Taliban basically believe women should all but disappear from public life. It's nonsense, of course, and behind the curtain, it's utterly ignored. Beauty salons were initially closed, but the women owners are the main family breadwinners, so they've been allowed back. For special occasions, particularly weddings, they come for hair and makeup. They have for generations, and it's not un-Islamic. But the relationship with the Taliban's morality police is tense. Over the past 20 years, a new generation of educated and ambitious women has grown up, expecting a lot more than the Taliban's archaic sense of order. They're angry and scared, but determined. We won't identify her, but this 22-year-old working in her family shop is about to finish her degree in Russian. She has no intention of staying. Can I ask it this? My daughter is about the same age as you. She's a bit younger. She works in the fashion industry. Could you tell her what your life is like? Amongst the poorest sections of society, women are disproportionately affected by the economic crisis here. This is a common sight, women and children waiting outside bakeries. Wealthier customers leave extra money and it's handed out at the end of the day. It's demeaning and many intentionally wear burqas to hide their embarrassment and identity. The Taliban's old guard believe this is sustainable. The new generation know Afghanistan will remain cut off and sanctioned until it changes. Afghanistan is desperate for outside help and that may be the only hope women here have. Stuart Ramsey, Sky News, Kabul.